I mean, created games before esports even existed. For example, StarCraft. Um, you know, what are the keys to succeeding in that space, especially today when it's so overcrowded? Uh, it depends from which perspective, right? So, I mean, there's the game developer, game publisher perspective. There's the professional perspective. There's the the people who are creating leagues. Um, but as a as a developer, I think it's making an esports game is is not particularly different than just making a great game. There's a lot of things that, that go into making a competitive game, but there's a lot of things that go into making a great story game. You know, it's like a lot of the details and polish and caring about your community in a much different way. You know, I think with esports, um, you're obviously, your primary audience now becomes the hardcore players, which is a little bit of, I think, shift in perspective for developers that might be used to making stuff for like a more casual single player audience. But, I, but that's why I still, though, think there's a lot of similarities. I think any game, you have to really think about your audience and you have to make a great game for the person, you know, for the people you're intending to. So if you're making a competitive esports game, then you're making the game for, you know, it's gotta be a game that pros want to engage with and has great skill differentiation, has great gameplay, lends itself to being, you know, watched by other people. You know, there's all these elements. You mentioned uh, Korea. Obviously, you guys were, were huge in Korea before things took off here with StarCraft. But did you have any uh, sense that one day you'd be seeing something like the Overwatch League with city-based teams sprouting up and uh, and following the, the traditional sports model? I mean, I guess it depends on when. You know, it's um, pre-StarCraft. I don't think any of us foresaw it taking off in the way that it has. So certainly if you asked me pre-StarCraft days, could I imagine like leagues like we're seeing today? Of course not. You know, I don't think we even imagine StarCraft taking off the way it did and become this competitive esport. Um, but you know, now that if you asked me like a few years ago, I think it's much more foreseeable that we might start seeing these sorts of leagues start to happen. I mean, certainly with the ascendance of League of Legends and you know, how much uh, longevity it's really had and how they continue to to nurture that league and make it relevant. You know, I think it's it's a very natural progression to start seeing other types of leagues. And, and the regional play, I think, will be really interesting, whether or not that works or not. Um, but, you know, I kind of applaud, you know, Activision Blizzard for, for being bold and doing something new. When it comes to your own career at Blizzard, obviously as you work your way up, you get further and further away from hands-on development. And I want to get your thoughts on what it's like to be able to have hands-on again with, with Bonfire. It's, uh, I think it's really been great, honestly, and it, it's probably less about getting my hands back on the creative side of it. It's more about working with a smaller group of people every day. You know, I think what happens to a lot of people that are successful in growing, scaling companies is you end up, you know, managing hundreds of people rather than tens of people. And it requires very different levels of interactions. And you end up in a lot of meetings every day and a lot of like, um, you know, very light touches on a lot of people rather than getting to really invest in a smaller number of people. And that's probably what I, I enjoy the most about Bonfire is just being with a, you know, less people and be able to really invest in them and build a smaller team. Are there similarities to what's, what you're doing now in Bonfire in terms of the current ecosystem to when the early days of your game development uh, career? Um, you mean it's just in terms of the landscape, right? I mean, there's a, a lot's changed, but in some ways a lot is still the same. Um, I'd say probably one of the biggest changes is um, nowadays you can really focus on making a game much more quickly. You know, in the old days, you had to spend the first half of development just standing up all the technology and getting to a point where you could start iterating on gameplay. Um, there's just so many steps. Now you can have much smaller teams that can have a much bigger impact. You know, you start thinking about, you know, like engines like Unreal and Unity allow you almost instantly to stand up a game. And then if you're doing something multiplayer, you can have game servers up and running almost instantly running on like Google or Amazon cloud services. So that's probably the, the biggest thing that I think is really exciting is that you can form a company now and focus almost entirely on game development from the get-go. And those technologies also allow you to have smaller teams and do a lot more right. with them. Yeah, no, exactly. So what excites you uh, about the future when you, when you look at yourself as a game developer, having all the success that you've already had? You know, I guess what it really comes down to is um, 
you know, I just enjoy making these sorts of game experiences that connect people. You know, like the whole purpose of Bonfire is to, you know, build friendships through online game experiences. You know, and that's really been, I think when I look through my career and the things I'm, you know, really proud of from the product standpoint, it's really those games that spawn these communities and those communities end up, you know, having all these friendships and guilds and clans within them. So I think that's what, you know, we're really inspired to kind of continue to build at Bonfire. And BlizzCon is uh, just around the corner and that's, that's a place where I'm sure you've heard countless stories of people that met virtually and then married in real life or the clans, all that kind of stuff. What, 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 what role did the, the, the evolution of that show play for you as that, as that took off over the years? Uh, I, I don't know if that had any um, bearing on, let's say, Bonfire, but I, I guess it's more of a, uh, I'm sorry about that, it's more of a, you know, validation that there are these communities out there and, it, and they have real, life, real connections outside of being online. I think one of the things that people would look at online friendships and online relationships as um, not being real friendships. And I think one of the things you see at something like BlizzCon, where you have all these people that are guildmates that fly from all over the world to go meet in real life for the first time, and they're already actually really close friends. But now they get to you know hang out in real you know in person over at BlizzCon.